Once the dye has been fabricated, it is then time to package it. Before the dye can be sent to customers, even if it is an academic dye, not for commercial use, it has to be mounted on a package. The package is usually made of plastic or sometimes of ceramic, and it is supposed to provide a bunch of really important um, functions to the dye. Now I'm going to list the functions that the package is supposed to provide and we'll talk briefly about them. The first is mechanical support. So the package is supposed to give mechanical support to the dye. Recall that the dye is just a piece of silicon with uh, features created on top. Uh, most dye are covered in a thick passivation layer made of silicon dioxide. Uh, but they cannot provide mechanical support for themselves. What the package does is it provides a solid ground upon which the dye is fitted so that it can then be combined with other components in a larger system. The second and perhaps the most important function is communication. Specifically communication with the outside world. So the chip needs to communicate with the uh, outside world um, to provide outputs and to accept inputs. The package helps do this by providing pins to the chip. The third function is cooling. So all chips, all microchips, dissipate power. Power is dissipated in the form of heat, and this heat will then accumulate on the surface of the chip. This heat needs to escape, otherwise the chip will heat up so much that it can start affecting its uh, its uh, functionality or its performance. Cooling is provided by the chip, by the package, by providing a very large surface area. The surface area comes in contact with air, which allows heat to be removed by radiation or uh, by, by convection. Uh, if the chip dissipates a lot of power, so much so that the area, the mere area of the package is not enough to radiate this uh, heat away, then we could have fins, which are usually made of metal, that increase, increase the surface area and allow cooling to be more efficient. With very large um, chips that dissipate uh, an even larger amount of, uh, of heat, you might need cooling fans to provide additional removal of hot air from the surface of the chip. This is, for example, the case with most microprocessors. And the last but not least function of a package is to provide protection. So protection means that we protect the surface of the chip from scratches, uh, other forms of mechanical damage, and anything that could change its properties. Remember that the dye is basically silicon, and the properties of silicon can change significantly uh, based on the impurities that it contains. Also, all of the metal layers that form interconnects in the chip can become scratched easily because they are really small. So we provide an, an additional layer of protection through the uh, body of the package. Recall that even within the chip itself, there is a layer of protection provided by the passivation layer. So in this diagram, you can see like a very simple way in which a die is mounted on a package. The die uh, is the white area here. Uh, and at probably one of the metal layers, you create something called bonding pads. These are very large by the standards of the of the chip, very large uh, rectangular or square areas of metal layer. And these provide areas where we can contact uh, the pins. So they provide contact between the die core and between the pins. Now the pins happen to be at the periphery, usually, but not always at the periphery of the package. And contact between the pads and the pins is provided by uh, wires. And these wires are usually made of gold and they are very fine, but they are um, wires that you can actually see with the naked eye. So almost everything you can see here is something that you can observe with the naked eye. Uh, the bonding pads protrude out of the passivation layer to allow, allow this bonding uh, operation to happen. Uh, this bonding operation is mechanical, but it is very high precision because dimensions are still small. So it is usually done uh, mechanically using robotic arms. Now, this is the uh, body of the package, the substrate of the package, if you will, which is usually made out of plastic, as I said. 
And plastic is useful because it provides good, some forms of plastic provide good thermal conduction, allowing heat to escape the chip, but they are electrical insulators, thus allowing the chip uh, to be uh, grounded properly and insulated properly from the surrounding environment. The pins, of course, are made of conductive material, some kind of metal, and they provide uh, communication between the uh, core of the chip and the outside world. Uh, there's a lot of conditioning that has to happen on the, on the chip itself to transform signals from off-chip uh, signals to on-chip uh, signals and vice versa. And we considered this in earlier videos. Now, this is a cross-section of the package and it's only showing the bottom of the package, the base of the package. Usually what happens next is that you have a top of the package that is also made using the same kind of plastic. And this top is glued to the bottom so that they then form a nearly hermetic seal that contains the chip within. The chip itself is also bonded to the plastic so that it sticks uh, to the bottom. And this is usually done using an epoxy glue of some sort. The whole operation of mounting the chip on the package and bonding the wires and uh, closing the package has to be done in a relatively clean environment. It's usually not as uh, tightly classified or controlled as an environment where um, photolithography takes place, but it is still a clean environment. Now I want to discuss a very um, important topic, although it might seem like a niche topic, which is the economy of pins. Basically, how many pins we have available, because when you start designing microchips, the economy of available resources is sometimes the limiting factor that controls how your design uh, proceeds. Meaning if you, have, um, if you have too little silicon area, you have to focus on certain design considerations. If you have too few pins, you have to, to focus on certain considerations. And the bottom line is, in a lot of modern designs, the design is actually pin limited rather than core limited. And what that means is that we are kind of limited by the need for more pins. We need more pins than we have available. Think about it. If we have a chip where the pins are only on the periphery, the pins have to be separated from each other by a certain pitch. And so the size of the package then limits the amount of pins, the number of pins that we have available. Now, if you have a core, a, a die, that die is usually mounted on a very small area of the package. The majority of the area of the package is not dedicated to housing the die, it's actually dedicated to cooling the chip and to providing pins. And this is usually what happens. When you choose your package, you choose it based on the number of pins that you need rather than the area of the die. The area of the die is usually very small. It's in millimeters uh, in, in, in the largest direction. So you're not ruled by this guy, you're ruled by these guys. And so you always need more pins than you need, uh, than, you, than you have available. And sometimes you have to change your design to accommodate the fact that you don't have pins available. Of course, this is not a hard set rule. Sometimes, sometimes you have more pins than you need. Sometimes some of the pins, you, you only have one kind of, of commercially available package and you have to fit your die within it. And that package has more pins than you need. You cannot always custom make uh, a, a package that suits your needs. So sometimes some of the pins are not necessary. And in this case, these pins will be unused. This is more common in simpler circuits, uh, especially in non-commercial circuits, but you will also find it sometimes in very simple microchips that contain a few logic gates or like an adder or something. You will have unused pins. It is also a fact that you can have unused pads. So you could have unused pins and unused pads because sometimes you insert pads and you don't use them, you don't connect them. And this has to do with design rules for the specific vendor through which you are fabricating because sometimes your vendors will specify a certain size for pads and these pads have to be inserted with a certain density. So even if you don't need them, you have to draw them. And in that case, your die core itself is imposing the size of the chip. And so imagine that you have a core that is small 
and then you have like all the paths that you need around this core. Now, if your core is larger and you still only need these eight paths, the design rules might actually tell you that you cannot do this. You have to insert as many pads as the layout will take. And now these additional pads are unused. So that is also a possibility, in which case you will draw the pads but leave them unconnected.